The poem Heart and Mind by Edith Setwell is about the two binary opposites of love. These are physical love and the love of the heart and mind. The poem opens with the lines, said the lion to the lioness, when you are amber dust, no more a raging fire like the heat of the sun, no liking but all lust. Now the word said here is important. It suggests that what is being said is more important than who is saying it. In this regard, the poem opens like an old fable, like one of those old classical stories, said the lion to the lioness. So it opens like an old fable. Then we have this phrase, lion to the lioness. Now, the lion and the lioness may have symbolic attributes connoting wisdom, power, royalty, dignity and ferocity. This is perhaps the reason why of all animals the lion has been chosen uh, to speak to the lioness. They're quite dignitary animals. They, of course, the lion is of course the king of the jungle. So it's quite fitting that the lion, the, an important animal, be chosen to speak about this important subject, which is love. Then we have this phrase, raging fire like the heat of the sun. Now this phrase here, of course, contains a simile. And this fire could refer to the burning passion of the lion's life, which is exaggerated or hyperbolized with the simile, where it is compared to the heat of the sun. Finally then, this phrase amber dust brings to mind the colour of the lioness's pelt and it suggests that even as dust, her remains will be precious. The poem goes on. With the lines, remember still the flowering of the amber blood and bone, the rippling of bright muscles like a sea. Remember the rose prickles of bright paws. Now the word remember is interesting here. It's an imperative imploring the lioness to hold on to the memory of her physical form. The words rippling and bright, of course, gives us this idea of this muscular lion's body glistening in the sun with the rippling muscles kissing uh, the uh, rays of the sunlight. So here, the, the verb rippling creates a sense of movement And power, the word bright, implies the physical form is almost blinding. It's so immense that it's quite blinding. Now the phrase, like a sea, is of course a simile. And it exaggerates the physical strength being referred to here. And finally, the phrase, rose prickles of bright prose, creates a contrast through the two forms of the lion's paw, when it's padded and when it's clawed. So here, in short, the lion is telling the lioness to remember her physical form. Her paws, the, uh, the bright muscles of the physical form, because of course, this will not last, as the poem continues and tells us. We have the lines, Though we shall mate no more, till the fire of that sun, the heart, and the moon, cold bone, are one. Of course, though we shall mate no more is a reference to there being no more physical union between the lions. Till the fire of that sun of the heart is interesting. It's a metaphor which refers to the warm-blooded living passion of the lions. And finally, moon cold bone represents the lifeless body of the lion when it no longer has any more life left. The poem goes on said the skeleton lying upon the sands of time so now there's no more physical form anymore it's now just a skeleton said the skeleton lying upon the sands of time the great gold planet that is the morning heat of the sun is greater than all gold more powerful than the tawny body of a lion that fire consumes like all that grows or leaps so is the heart now, the skeleton is an interesting image here because, of course, it is a common symbol of death. And the phrase, sands of time, implies that 
time is running out for all living things. This phrase here, Great Gold Planet, is of course an alliteration and it draws our attention to the sun, the source of all natural life. The poet is saying here that the sun mourns. Through personification, the heat of the sun mourns for the loss of life. As time passes, all life will die. And then here, this idea of the fire consuming indicates that passion, like fire, consumes all, particularly physical passion. Then we have the lines, more powerful than all, dust. Once I was Hercules or Samson, strong as the pillars of the seas. But the flames of the heart consumed me, and the mind is but a foolish wind. The phrase more powerful than, than more powerful than all dust is a comparison. And the comparison here makes a distinction between the physical body of a person, which turns to dust, and the mind. And the way that the writer refers to the physical body is of course by using exaggerated examples. We have Greek gods here, we have Hercules and Samson. And the poet reminds us that even famous Greek heroes died. The simile used here is used to indicate their strength, where they are strong as the pillars of the seas. And finally, this phrase here, the mind is but a foolish wind, implies that passion is a destructive force against which reason can offer no defence. The poem continues. Said the sun to the moon, when you are but a lonely white crone, and I, a dead king in my golden armour, somewhere in a dark wood, remember only this of our hopeless love, that never till time is done will the fire of the heart and the fire of the mind be one. And it's interesting that we have this sun now talking to the moon. Now, they could represent different things. The sun and the moon could represent masculinity and femininity, or even life and death. This phrase here, a lonely white crone, the moon is personified as, in the, as a lonely old woman. This phrase here, a dead king in my golden armour, somewhere in a dark wood, is interesting. It creates a powerful image of a lifeless sun, a dead king lost in space. And finally, the, ver the word hopeless is interesting. It's an adjective which implies that all love is forlorn. It is finite and will eventually end. We are commanded with imperatives to remember this. And that is how the poem ends.